domain restrictions come from excluded values. In other words, if I want to know what the domain is, I can factor my rational expression. And I know my domain is restricted by whatever the zeros of the denominator are. Negative 3 and 2 are excluded from my domain. My domain is all the x's, where x is not negative 3 and x is not 2. Graphically, these excluded values can show up in one of two ways. Either they can form this a, a vertical asymptote, which this one does at negative 3, or they can make a hole in the graph, which this one does at 2. So this video is about how to find uh, vertical asymptotes and how to find holes and how to know when it shows up as a vertical asymptote or a hole. An example. First step for a vertical asymptote or holes is to factor. I factor everything, the numerator and denominator. My numerator factors by difference of squares for this one. My denominator factors by what multiplies to negative 2 and adds to negative 1. Once I have it factored like that, I know 2 and negative 1 are going to be either vertical asymptotes or holes. Vertical asymptotes come from after canceling whatever's left over. If I cancel out the x minus 2s, the only uh, excluded value left over is negative 1. So in this one, my vertical asymptote is x equals negative 1. Holes come from the things that did cancel. In this case, 2. I have a hole at 2 comma something because after canceling, 2 is no longer an excluded value. The way I get the something is I plug 2 into what's left over. I plug 2 into x plus 2 over x plus 1. Oops, plus 1. If I plug a 2 into that, I get 2 plus 2 over 2 plus 1 through 4 over 3. My hole is 2 comma 4 thirds. So to review, I factored everything, I looked at my excluded values, and I canceled. The things that were still in excluded value, those are my vertical asymptotes, negative 1 in this case. The things that after canceling were no longer excluded, 2 in this case, that led to a hole. That led to the x value of a hole. To get the y value, I just had to plug 2 back into the simplified equation. I plugged into the simplified one because if I plugged into the original, I would get 0 over 0, and that makes no sense. So I plug into the simplified one where I no longer get 0 over 0. I get 4 over 3. Seems a bit much. With a little bit of practice, like everything with graphing uh, rational functions, with a little bit of practice, it gets easier. I know holes in vertical asymptote. My first step is to factor. The numerator here does not factor. x plus 5. The denominator, I would factor by multiplying 5 and negative 2 and getting negative 10. I would look for things that multiply to negative 10 and add to negative 3, like negative 5 and positive 2. I would rewrite the thing I'm trying to factor as 5x squared minus 5x plus 2x minus 2. I would do some factor by grouping. I get a 5x is my GCF on the left, positive 2 on the right. This factors to 5x plus 2, x minus 1. So my excluded values are negative 2 fifths and positive 1. If they cancel out after I simplify, then they're uh, holes. If they don't cancel out, they're vertical asymptotes. In this case, I go to simplify and nothing cancels. I still have x plus 5 or 5x plus 2, x minus 1. So in this case, both of them are vertical asymptotes. Neither is a hole. Holes come from the things that cancel. Nothing canceled. So in this case, I have two vertical asymptotes. One of my vertical asymptotes is x equals negative 2 fifths. The other one is x equals 1. Holes come from the things that do cancel. Nothing canceled. Here I do some factoring. I'm going to do the denominator first because it looks easier to factor. There's only a GCF. That's fine. The numerator. Oh, goodness. Adios mio. Okay. I have a 5. I have a negative 18. If I multiply 5 and negative 18, I get negative 90. What factors to negative 90? What multiplies to negative 90? Adds up to 9. Negative 15 and 6 do that. So I'm going to think about 5x squared 
minus 15x plus 6x minus 18. Do some factor by grouping. I get 5x is my GCF on the left, plus 6 is my GCF on the right. I have 5x plus 6, x minus 3. Okay. Oof. That was just a step. Oof. Uh, my excluded values are 0 and 3. So that's going to help me find my vertical asymptotes and my holes. I think about what cancels out and what doesn't. After canceling, my x minus 3s go away, and I just have 5x plus 6 over x. My vertical asymptotes are the excluded values that remain even after I canceled. 0 is still there, so my vertical asymptote is x equals 0. My holes come from the things that canceled out. 3 canceled out. My hole is 3 comma something. Holes are points in the graph, so it's a 3 is the x value that canceled out. The y value comes from plugging 3 in to the simplified equation. 5 times 3 plus 6 over 3. 15 plus 6 over 3. 21 over 3. Well, that's 7. I'm going to have a hole at the point 3, 7. Try another one. Step 1 is I factor. Denominator is classic difference of squares. x minus 1, x plus 1. The numerator, it looks like I'm going to have to do some factor by grouping. There's four terms, so I'm guessing it's a factor by grouping problem. On the left side, I have a GCF of x squared. On the right side, I have a GCF of positive 3. So it looks like it factors to x squared plus 3, x plus 1. Once I have it all factored, I'm ready to start thinking about vertical asymptotes and holes. Vertical asymptotes come from things that don't cancel out, like x plus 1 cancels out. My vertical asymptote is going to be x equals 1, because that did not cancel out. Originally, my excluded values were 1 and negative 1. The negative 1 canceled out, so that will be a hole. The 1 did not, so that will be a vertical asymptote. My vertical asymptote is x equals 1. My hole is negative 1, comma, whatever I get if I plug negative 1 in for x. I have negative 1 squared plus 3 over negative 1 minus 1, 1 plus 3 over negative 2, 4 over negative 2, that makes negative 2. I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1 and a hole at the point negative 1 comma negative 2.